Sí, ya está. 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 Sí, ya Sí, 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 No, I always prefer physical pointers because I can defend myself. <laughs> I think there will be no need to defend. <laughs> Okay, so let's uh, start this uh, seminar. So I'm very pleased to see you uh, here and uh, in this room and also in, um, online. So we basically start this DIPC community seminars uh, uh, 2024, so this is the third year. So our first uh, talk, which we start with a bit delay this year, but we have very, uh, 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 let's say, an interesting speaker. And we have already, let's say, a list of speakers until the end of this year. So you, we will be announcing slowly. Uh, the first speaker this year uh, is uh, you know, Vitaly uh, Golovak, that basically uh, is well known in the APC community, right? So briefly, uh, Vitaly defended his PhD 2005 in, in, uh, under the supervision of Professor in Ross, in Basel, then executed a couple of, of free postdoctoral researchers in Grenoble, in Munich. In 2012, uh, he obtained an Iker Bath Fellow. Actually, we got the same uh, fellowship in the same year uh, to start Material Physics Center and the group of Berger. In 2017, was appointed or promoted to Iker Bath. Uh, associate, which basically now is uh, working in this uh, line. So basically, uh, in a couple of words, so his research line focuses mostly on, I would say, uh, quantum transport, quantum uh, information, and things in, in, in the solid state materials. So the floor is good. Thank you, Mike. <clears throat> so I uh, would like to make this as informal as possible, so you can. If you don't understand anything, please ask or raise your hand and ask questions. And I apologize in advance because I have too many slides and if I don't get to the end, I'll just stop at 45 minutes. Uh, so first of all, I'd like to thank uh, the sponsors and 
uh, I'd like to begin uh, to motivate the, the research that, that, that I'm conducting by the low intensity proposal for quantum computing from, from 97, it was published in 98. And uh, actually what is interesting, uh, so this is the, the original uh, picture from the paper that uh, uh, they envisioned uh, coupling of the electron to, to the ferromagnet, and in this case could be also ferromagnetically in, insulated. And uh, well, I spent uh, like five or six years in, in the group of Daniel Wilson, and I worked on plenty of problems. And now, for many years, actually, I'm trying to implement something that has been, well, I'm trying to work out something that has been uh, envisioned a long time ago. Uh, so, what, what is a load in chance of proposal? So, maybe not, not all of you are familiar with, with uh, this proposal. Uh, so, the qubit. The zero and one are encoded in the electron spin. So this always felt kind of right because it was simple. You know, simple things are usually right. And um, the electron, the spin up and spin down states are, are the two uh, forms of computational basis. And if you want to kind of have a resume about what is important about the spin qubit, uh, you have an electron in the, in the quantum dot. Uh, the electron has charge and it has spin. Because it has charge, you can couple to it to the, uh, uh, via the uh, charge, by electric fields, and via the spin orbit interaction, uh, this coupling uh, uh, mediates a coupling to the spin. Or you can directly couple to the spin <clears throat> via a number of interactions like hyperfine field, for example, the over fuzzy field is is very important for, for this case and it plays a say a negative role you would like to not have it. Furthermore, what is important because these structures are typically very, very small, you have a crosstalk between different structures. So the the coherence uh, time, so the, the, the lifetime of the spin uh, okay goes to minutes in, in, uh, in some experiments. The coherence time go, goes to 10 milliseconds, but more, more usual, it's at, a, at about uh, microsecond or 100 na nanoseconds. So the 10 milliseconds occurs in, in, in uh, not in quantum dots, but in acceptors. And in order to get large coherent times, uh, people usually use uh, isotopically purified materials. So the, the operation time is also pretty fast. So what, what's nowadays present? So uh, in, Intel has in its research and development uh, cycle uh, this kind of uh, quantum computer. So first one was called force reach and now there is a thermal force. And um, thermal force, I think it's, it should be available in the public. So, uh, how does this, how, how do these uh, things look in practice? So, I mean, it's nice to draw pictures, but um, in reality, the structure looks entirely like, like this. And there are many layers, many, many gates. And, and this, this is just two qubits in this case. And their goal was to, to couple it to the transmission line. So it's like here, uh, uh, at, at a large scale, a lot of, uh, uh, a resonator and the quantum dot is somewhere uh, tiny inside the structure. So uh, th this this type of uh, uh, experiments uh, they 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 all go along what we have proposed long time ago. And I would like to point out there is a kind of a duality. So you can couple what, what I already said. You can couple to the Electron spin uh, via the ma magnetic field directly via the um, magnetic moment. So you, you have the, the ESI effect, the electron spin resonance effect, and you have the, also the EDRSI effect where you can couple to electric fields, but not to static electric field, but to those with oscillating time. <clears throat> so you can you have to skip the zero frequency component and then you can write. An interaction that is very similar to the ear sign interaction, and that's called ear sign. So, new, 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 
But uh, Mu is, well, I, I invented it, so, so I tried to make it as simple as this. So Mu Nu. Mu is, is frequency or what, what is it? No. Uh, so this is magnetic moment. Yeah. And this is a spin electric moment. Ah, right. So this is the analog of Mu. And uh, so if if Mu is, is a G factor, Bohr magneton, Time spin. Okay, here it's it's a kind of operator, and uh, and the mu has uh, its analog of the Bohr magneton that is not a fundamental constant but it's an Aquino constant, and it's also proportional to the spin. So you, you can see the analogy, and I'll come later to this. I, I'll explain. Actually, it's very simple to write it down, and there is this duality. So you can write James Cam sort of like, like this, and you can play with the spins. And all that you need for this is, is to have uh, either coupling to, to the spin directly or coupling the spin by mediated via the spin orbit interaction. So both things are important, and I will try to, to explain you uh, well what I am trying to pursue nowadays in both directions. Uh, although it, it it will be a bit sketchy. So you uh, let, let's let's continue uh, by just motivating it further. So if you could do such things like have spin orbit interaction, you could do amazing things <clears throat> by sliding the, the electron on the surface, closing the loop and, and, and writing a unitary Young uh, um, uh, kind of theory with uh, SU2 fields and doing uh, quantum computation by, by picking an, uh, an SU2 field along the the trajectory. So this this also this hasn't been yet implemented, but people have already have already uh, kind of like uh, transported uh, spin and measured the initialized and measured it. Yeah. I didn't understand quite well the, this structure over here. The quantum body is supposed to move around the crystal, and yeah. that is the validity of the. So these are gates. So you you kind of um, gate it in such a way that the electron slides. And it's well, ideally, it would be a parallel transfer, so you do not modify much. But if you do it slow enough, uh, the, the spin will remain a doublet, so you move from one side uh, well, to another by getting it appropriately, and then you, you, you uh, make a trajectory for the electron localizing the quantum. And okay, so. I, I'd like also to, I never placed this in, in any time on, on, on during my talk, but if you don't know much about quantum computing, you have to know at least the Divincenzo criteria. And I put it on purpose because next I will, I will consider a very simple picture of everything, and I don't want to mislead you that you you, are, you think that it's not that simple. So actually the Divincenzo criteria say that you have to pick a, uh, System that that should be potentially scalable, with, with the case of uh, quantum dots and electrons. Uh, okay, this always look to be the case. By the way, Intel has billions of of qubits, but it cannot use them all at the same time. So it, it uses up like to twelve, and since the coherence times are not yet at that level, so scalability with these structures usually is not a problem. It's rather the infrastructure that you have to build on top and the, and optimizing the system to uh, to have appropriate coherence times. Then, okay, the initialization and readout, uh, in many cases, they are the same problem. So if it's a non-demolition readout, so the, this electron remains in the quantum dot. And uh, then we basically have one of the same problem to solve and uh, the, you are left basically with with two more problems, which which you have to, to um, optimize the coherence times and build a quantum gate. So means uh, one example was in the previous uh, case when you move the electron around the dot. But this is the craziest thing you can think about. Usually you you do just uh, pulsing and manipulating the spin by ears or ears. So. <clears throat> uh, 
people usually focused a lot on coherence, and I've done it also. Uh, we studied a lot of things and tried to make the, the qubit as coherent as possible, the spin as coherent as possible. But usually you have to deal, usually you are dealing with quantum systems. They are already quite coherent. So unless you have some, some nasty degrees of freedom like nuclear spins in the system, uh, these systems are pretty coherent. What people have not uh, addressed so much is when you do quantum gates, you need to have a classical gate. And now there are two types of, of computers you can envision. One where you have a macroscopic uh, system like a laser, which creates you a very good classical uh, electric field, and you shine it onto a, an atom, which is a very good uh, quantum system, and it works. And the best quantum computers, they are based on ion and cold atoms, so they are not the transmitter. And this is this is really really uh, uh, clear and easy, but the problem is that these are not at this, on the same scale. So I would call this a, a, a sort of like an extrinsic quantum computer because you you have the gates and the system on different scales. So one is macroscopic uh, on, on meter scale, and another is uh, nanoscopic. Now, with scalable quantum computers, which you want to implement, we need to implement the gates and the system on the same scale. <clears throat> and now, I, my, my oversimplified picture, oh, sorry. <clears throat> so you, you have a two-level system, some, some classical me measurement of so gates, and the, the model system would be like this, and, and the parameters will have an average and a fluctuation. So whatever you use to control the spin will have a fluctuation to it. And making the gate as classical as, as possible uh, is also as important as making the qubit as coherent as possible. So uh, the challenge here is coexistence of, of, of quantum and classical systems at the same time on, on the same scale. And now, now if you, well, if I would like to kind of uh, finish the summary, uh, if you have a, a gate that consists of many degrees of freedom, uh, you see each of them is, is has an average and, and a co correlation, then the the things that you could think how could to make a, a, a class a gate as classical as possible would be either to to freeze some degrees of freedom so so that, that the, the number of the of three degrees of freedom goes to small values, which would happen with lowering the temperature in the fermion gas or in the Bose Einstein condensation, or just to make a lot of degrees of freedom, then you gain like one of the square root of, of n. And this is what happens in transforms, they gain because they're so large. Yeah. <clears throat> so what I, I'm advocating uh, here is basically a system that, that has been uh, studied quite a lot now uh, in in the in the group of 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 Celia Rogero and by Maxi Lina and, uh, and, and and now Sara Catalani also joined. joined. So, so this this is a, a system which consists of a ferromagnetic insulator, a rope insulpipe, which is kind of a textbook example of a, of a ferromagnetic insulator. Um, everything is clear, it's insulating with this uh, um, magnetism um, and aluminum. And th this is an old system. In fact, it has been uh, uh, first realized in 88, but it turned out to be quite a difficult system to, to implement. And well, we should all be proud that, that uh, at CFM it has been implemented because implemented because not many people uh, could actually implement it. And uh, it can be used in many ways for spintronics. It can be useful for, for many things. And here I would like just to focus on on uh, on its use as a, as a source of as a real re resource of for gates. So I would like basically to insert here between this ferromagnetic insulator and the electron uh, an aluminum. And the, the reason for that is basically uh, to average out of a, of a, a larger area of the ferromagnet and not be sensitive. To, to the uh, disorder at the, at the interface. So I'll come back later to this. I'll show that uh, 
the BCS splitting is actually uh, very clear in, in the systems. So it has the advantage that there are large induced spin flipping and it is local in space. So in the previous example that I showed, I forgot to say, uh, people use stray fields and that's great, but uh, stray fields, they decay uh, slowly in, in space. So there is a lot of crosstalk between uh, be, between um, uh, systems and th they interact with each other, it's difficult to control. So it would be nice to have something uh, uh, local. So I'd like to start from from far away. So it's an inter interface physics. Uh, we studied it in the context of spintronics and we wrote down a theory that, that uh, uh, basically describes how this metal thermogenic insulator uh, in interfaces work. So, so I mean, the, the, the model is written here and the uh, idea of the calculation is basically <clears throat> to do the following. So instead of calculating it by a mass matrix, which is impossible in this case because we have a correlated system, it's like a, a total lattice model. <clears throat> we uh, said, okay, the electron here is diffusive, so it will visit randomly uh, this interface. Let, let's kind of like consider a um, mi mixed layer where the electron spins are dissolved in, in, in some, it's a hypothetical layer. And apply here, uh, just uh, standard uh, calculations for the electrons uh, for, for scattering of the electron and magnetic impurities. So this is kind of a trick. So it's not a, a total one-to-one -one correspondence. But it, uh, let's see what happens as a result. Uh, and th then, okay, uh, there are two important mechanisms here for which contribute to spin uh, relaxation. One is spin defacing. So you 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 see spikes in space along the electron trajectory where you pick a, a phase. So you pick an average phase that gives you uh, uh, um, an average uh, precession. So it, it will be a contribution to the, to, to the Larmor precession, but you, you also have a variance of it because this is random. Uh, so, so this is a, an estimate which gives up to uh, constant the right result. So you can write down like, like this almost correctly the, the relaxation rate, the defacing rate. And then there is another process which uh, where you flip the spin and you emit a sort of like if you wish a magnum, in the case of the ferromagnet, it would be a magnum. And uh, in this case, you, you, you lose energy, whereas this is elastic. So uh, okay, you can write uh, block diffusion equations and uh, separate the, the spin in, into the dynamic and equilibrium part. Uh, after doing all, all this, uh, it boils down to, to writing the spin relaxation tensor, which in the language of the qubit now would have the, this form. Whereas here, there is no qubit. Here, the electron is, is a flying electron. But nevertheless, these rates can be calculated for the equivalent electron. So th this is not a new problem. So it's like the nuclear magnetic resonance uh, story. And uh, you, you, you have the relaxation of the longitudinal and the, of the transverse component. And all, what it gives after doing all this, you, you derive this famous boundary condition and you can tell what are the spin mixing factors. So this boundary condition is is uh, kind of like the holy grail of, of SMR in spintronics, and uh, there are three kind of spin mixing conductances, and then you can really tell the physical meaning of each of them in a different way via the spin relaxation tensor via the longitudinal and transverse uh, uh, relaxation. So GS is is related just to spin flip. GR doesn't have a meaning of of its own, but uh, a different combination of GF and GR can have a meaning in terms of the phasing, for example, and GI is, uh, is an average Larmor precession, so it's an exchange field. Now, okay, 
you take the limit b to zero because it was a fictitious and amazingly everything uh, remains finite and when such things happen okay there is some some truth to to the result because although it's an approximation or it's a it's a trick but uh, this 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 cannot be totally wrong and in fact it turned out that that it, it explained quite well the experiments where it was supposed to explain so what one more thing uh, it works well with paramagnetic cases. Uh, it's easy to do the, the correlators, and therefore the 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 fit the um, so, so, sorry the uh, fit to the experiment is best in the case of the of the paramagnetic case. But for European sulfide, was also pretty good. So we, we have not just uh, like explain, uh, written microscop uh, microscopic theory for the spin mixing conductances, but we have also predicted new effects that were not known before. In particular, uh, we predicted a strange metal behavior that comes due to a non-local, uh, or if you want, a numerous uh, Hanley effect. The Hanley effect was also well, our previous work. Uh, which I cannot tell here about, but basically a combination of two effects gives rise to a new to a new um, effect that, that is not always that you see a linear mag uh, magnetic resistance effect in nature, and usually when you see in the experiment, it's very difficult to understand what it is due to. So uh, then the Fit the fit into the experiment so that uh, this theory can explain the experiment very well. So if, if you see, this is an amazing uh, um, uh, fit, and then you can extract the spin mixing conductances and tell that actually for the paramagnetic case, the role of the of the direct spin flip of, of the GS is, is relevant. For the case of the European sulfide, it also works pretty well, but the magnetism there it's more complicated. So uh, due to sort of like our <clears throat> uh, capability to model uh, correlated magnets, we did just uh, RPA and mean field, and well, and the fit overall is is fine. Now <clears throat> coming back to the to the why. Uh, it is a good system. So European sulfide aluminum, it shows very nice uh, spin splitting. And in this experiment, uh, it, it was sort of a puzzle why the inner peak is higher than the lower. And we could explain it based on, on what is going on, on, on at the domain wall. So this is the, the simulation that also has a, a inner peak higher than the outer. Because if you think if there are two peaks, superimpose one on, on, onto another two BCS peaks, the outer one should be higher because it sits already on a continuum of tensile state. But in the experiment was go the other way around. So uh, we looked also at the triple correlations and the nonlinear si situations. Uh, and also we looked at the proximity uh, in, in wires and phase bias. And we found uh, okay, the magnetization shows a long range uh, component that that is required to compensate the Pauli param paramagnetism that, that, that occurs at, at the interface. So in physical picture, you, you can imagine that this exchange field, it extends in space uh, over some distance and, and it decays. So the, the, this slide, um, I'll, I'll, I'll come back. So, so, so uh, it comes as a as an exchange that 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 the decays in space as, as you go in proximity uh, away um, from the place where where you put the European supply. And why why uh, is this interesting? Because as you see, so co coming back to 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 your question about the the notion of, of the spin electric moment, uh, there is this duality. So if I implement something uh, that, that acts on the electron spin directly uh, and or acts intermediately by, by the electric field, this in both cases is good. 
So in this case here, I needed Norbit interaction to get this uh, mean. And the definition is basically given by an integral over the coordinate over the correction to the density that depends on, that has a spin structure. And all that you need for this is to have a, a dipole matrix element that is not zero between, between the uh, spin up and spin down, well, zero and one qubit component between the, between the states of the system. So uh, I, I, if you want, uh, you can calculate it in terms of of, uh, of the basically Rajman present house, uh, uh, which sits here in the spin orbit in interaction. Um, so in the case of the present house, it, it, it looks like that. And even furthermore, you can write dipole dipole interaction. It's like magnetic dipole dipole interaction. So by analogy, and you write it like that, and then you calculate it directly, uh, which is a different paper. Uh, and then you see it's the same. So this notion of spin electric moment, it does exist. It, it, it's, it's not, um, uh, it works basically, what I want to say. So, so coming to, to what can be done with, with this um, induced um, exchange field, well, a lot of things can be done. But the spin qubit, this is great because you can uh, work at zero magnetic field, almost zero external magnetic. You don't need many Tesla, which could be useful for integrating a superconducting system. And you have it locally in, in on each qubit, uh, it's, it, it's its own. And you could control it by some spintronics uh, mechanism that, that you could gain local control on the Depends on how fast you can do it, but there is a lot of potential. So there is integration to superconducting and to spintronics fields uh, by by having this uh, ferromagnetic insulator. And uh, so how does it, well, one of the problems that we actually faced when, when we initially thought about it is how do you measure the spin if you don't have a, a magnetic field? Because all the spin measurement you know, um, usually was energy resolved. And here you don't have an energy resolved uh, Accept because the kind of the quantum dot is, is very little um, split by the exchange field. And, and actually, it, it turns out that it's possible to, to measure it by a correction to the inductance that, that is generated um, by different, say, penetration of the opposite spin because you have a different bandage for the up and down components. So I don't know whether this was clear, but now I'd like to summarize and go to the next part because. I don't have so much time. So the outlook is that the thin splitting of the DCS density of states in aluminum European sulfide is interesting for spin qubits and also for superconducting spintronics, which uh, I don't have the opportunity to tell much of, about here, but there are a lot of applications and this has to be developed. So we, I don't know, we, we have, uh, uh, some know-how, so uh, Max is sitting here, but... <laughs> and, okay, uh, this could be something cool, so we could build a quantum systems and play with them. So, uh, the microscopic theory, it works pretty well in most cases. However, there are, okay, in interacting recently with, with the experimentalists, so the, some modifications needs to be added because uh, uh, there are new effects that we didn't think about. And, or say, we, we think there are new effects that, we, that at least there are experimental results that we cannot explain yet fully. So we have to work further on this. And now I would like to, to change to a different topic. And uh, I'd like first to give you like the simple idea so that, 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 that it is consistent there is a red line through all the top. So now I'd like to actually uh, devise systems with, with large spin orbit interaction. And the idea probably is, is not new, but it, it is as simple that probably anyone uh, could come to, to it. So if you have, well, a uh, quantum well with, with some asymmetry, so people usually write this Bichkov Rajba spin orbit interaction, and then you have some value of this alpha given by the spin orbit interaction, so it's small, it's because it's a relativistic effect. Now imagine uh, 
Imagine you have the case of a topological insulator, and you have several states. So it's a 3D topological insulator. You have several states on, on two surfaces. So it's a slab pretty thick of thickness D. And now you apply an electric field. Uh, clearly, you will you will induce a spin splitting that is as large as as uh, as this basically. Then okay, it's true that with momentum, the localization length of, of these surface states changes, so they breathe as you change momentum. So it will not be uh, dispersion less the, this quantity, but um, the idea is that it's really large, it's as large as it can get in this. So you, if the states would be localized uh, strictly at the interface, you would have it, it that large, and there is no smallness by a spin orbit, so it all sits uh, so the spin orbit is already large, it has been taken to infinity because it's a topological insulator. But okay, so it, it's a bit sketchy and I, I'll just try to 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 go into, into it so I don't think I'll get to to the end of the talk because I, I have like 10 minutes. 10 or so. Uh, I'd like to start from something that maybe, I don't know, some of you may, may find it it's uh, already uh, kind of uh, known, but it was quite surprising to me that many things were not clear in, in the field of, of the topological, of, of surface states of the topological insulator, precisely of strain induced topological insulator. So I'm not talking about uh, the most kind of classical topological insulators, but there is a class of materials that have inverted band gap. So they're semiconductors like mercury telluride or alpha thin. And uh, if you apply strain, you trans it's a semi-metal, it's a topological semi-metal to begin with, and if you apply strain, you transform it into a, a, a topological insulator. And, and the, the strain will determine the gap in this topological insulator. And uh, the, so it has basically the light hole band inverted because it interacts with the electron uh, and, and it, it, uh, it inverts it. And the electron looks like a hole, <clears throat> but this is basically the the gamma eight um, uh, uh, block, and this is the gamma six. And if you put it in contact with a regular band gap uh, semiconductor, you you will have uh, basically some uh, several states uh, uh, localized at the interface. Now in the literature. Uh, people often draw such a picture. And this picture actually <clears throat> uh, originates from the two bands of the light hole and electron in this case, uh, but totally ignoring the heavy holes. So, so, so you would have a zero cone in, in this, in this uh, case. And, uh, and it's common, I mean, if you, you would think that the interaction with the heavy hole is weak, you would be right to draw such a picture, but in fact, it's not. <clears throat> so the, uh, I'd like to go back to, to the sort of known in the literature uh, types of states, but known means that they are basically not known most of the time. So people actually have forgotten because it has been <laughs> like uh, a lot of years ago. So the, the first type of states that occur in, in these systems are the diakonov kayetsky state. So that they were um, written down in, in uh, 1981. And uh, they wrote them for the Lattinger model, which, which describes basically the, um, the light hole and heavy hole bands here. Uh, and the, there are three cases that they considered. And this is the physical case, the upper one, where the surface states uh, is basically uh, goes intermediate between the bulk branches, so that there is a surface space that is parabolic, and and that's it. And there are then cases when there are two branches, and this is inverted, but they are usually not physical. So the second type of surface states they have been written for for a different for lab, uh, but they are, as I said before, they are used uh, also in this system. So so this is a simple like chain model, and you get this direct cone, 
and Volkman uh, and Plato, they alluded to the um, supersymmetric uh, uh, in two D, and they call them real states. While nowadays we cannot call them real states because real states are three-dimensional states, whereas this now should be called sort of like the Dirac uh, states. But nevertheless, they've been um, like in H5. Now the, the big question is what happens if we add the hang hole? And already uh, Pankratov, Pakonov, uh, uh, and Volkov have, have already uh, considered these things, but without strain. And they actually also found that the heavy hole band uh, it breaks down the, 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 the uh, uh, result. So the, the inclusion of strain here uh, in, in includes uh, introduces um, uh, basically th these terms, but they are coupled. So this is the block of the heavy hole, and this is the uh, electron light hole block, which form the, the linear momentum state. But then there is a coupling which is also linear in momentum. And this linear in momentum coupling, it, it, it is relevant. So you cannot just uh, uh, drop it. So we, if you consider basically the, the case of a flat heavy hole band, so because it's it's kind of easy to study when when you do not have hybridization, so, so the heavy hole is flat. And, and for simplicity, we can just revert it in the barrier, then we obtain uh, this picture. So we, we recover the Dyatkin of Kayetsky states where they should be. So this is the heavy hole band, which is now very, very flat. And the work of Pankratov states basically in the center where they should be. And they form a, a direct cone there. And uh, well, that's nice. So there are two types. <laughs> uh, the left picture corresponds to the bulk situation. Yes, this, yeah. this is the structure. This is a 3D, 3D, 3D. This is 3D. And the right one corresponds to 2D, 2D. So the not the surface, because uh, uh, you can uh, no. also the surface of 3D material. No, no. or especially, especially 2D isolated 2D system without any bulk, 3D bulk. What? No. Uh, a, a a a like a, a monolayer of atoms? No, we don't consider this. Uh, the, the, the this is surface like this is surface state. So this okay. is classical, like uh, like usual. Okay. So, because I don't know whether a monolayer would be even stable in this case. But but we consider basically some like for example mercury telluride here and cadmium telluride here. So this is the, a very uh, typical system for this case. What drawn here there is a bulk projected density of state by grayish uh, color, and then the surface states here. So as you see, the this Dakin Kayetsky states and Volkov Pankratov state they they reappear, but then the heavy hole kind of like uh, breaks them in energy and uh, creates some avoiding process. Now we thought, okay, maybe we can uh, get rid of this uh, heavy hole. So let's just introduce a fictitious coupling strength. So by continuity, we can track by setting this to zero. We will get decoupled heavy holes and uh, Volkov Pankratov states that, that go all the way. And then by introducing it back, we can see how, how things change. The thing is that in reality, this is one. And when it is small, you can recover to Volkov Pankratov. So there are some avoided persons, but basically uh, what happens is the Volkov Pankratov states interact with the heavy hole, uh, which is flat in this case. Mm -hmm. um, and then you, oh, you okay. so, sorry again. Yeah. Uh, alpha parameter has some kind of physical meaning, or no. it's some kind of uh... it's fictitious. Okay, it, it, it's just to uh, to use continuity, so to track things from where mm -hmm. do they originate. So one could say in principle, okay, that there are the both contrasting states and the Jacobian states that come down here. They are the result of the interaction with the head of the wolf of Pankratov states with the heavy hole uh, band. So this, this is what one could argue. Um, but it's not as simple because in reality, this alpha is, is not small. And um, you can 
you could probably already notice here. So uh, the Volvo bank atoms of the cone, they have a different asymptotic alpha. So, so if I continue them linearly, they do not go to, to this asymptotic here. And there is a substantial mixing of the heavy cone in the, even in the bulk and also in the total state that, that makes it impossible basically to, to split them. So the, the different um, asymptotics, um, they, they occur uh, because the linear momentum uh, interaction gets larger and larger when you include the momentum. So it, it, it is a, 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 it's not a small uh, perturbation. So uh, one can consider the case more physical, like the case of a strong barrier where you have here yeah, basically uh, not, not a symmetric offset situation, but when there is a real barrier and the, the particles do not like to go there. And then what is funny, oh, okay, one question mine. Sorry, why are you calling this case H? H is heavy hole. Yeah, this is a conduction band. Oh, this oh. is in general, this uh, metallic system. Uh, and, yeah, so the semi metal, the semi, so this of course, it's a bit, so the heavy hole has a large mass and it, 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 it disperses a little bit like that, right? Yeah. Now we made an uh, estimation. This metallic system in general. It, or, or same time, the Fermi level would be here. Okay. Would be at this place. So this is the conduction band is, is made by light hole character. So it's a P type state. Whereas the S type state is, is deep below. And, and here it's the opposite, but now we consider large offset, so they are somewhere, the, these bands are somewhere fast, so this is a barrier, a strong band. Now, okay, you recover again the Jackman case, these states more or less, um, but what happens is the Volk and Pankato states, they look like, like inverted Rajda state. Now, if you ask me, uh, so you see, he, each each of these states they are simply degenerate. So this is not uh, this is really a, a, with strong spinotic interaction. So the, the spin splittings are so large that they they are simply degenerate. If you ask me which of these are, are topological, uh, I would say well if I apply a, a, a strain and I induce a gap here, I, I will end up with these states being topological because they are simply degenerate and they they will. I will show you a bit later how, how but they bridge the, the heavy hole bands to, to the light hole band. Whereas this state, uh, we wanted to, to not call them topological because they, they are basically like Rajba state. They, they, they come back. Of course, this is not a model that is implemented in reality. In reality, the heavy holes hybridize and this all does not exist. But uh, as you see, what, what people would think should be really topological, uh, actually, if uh, the things get compromised, depending on, the, on what is going on in, in, in the barrier, what kind of offsets, and so on. So it's not only about the topology, the properties of the set of states, uh, um, of the concrete set of states, they really depend a lot on the boundary condition. So now this is how it happens if you apply a strain. So you can compare the the K model, uh, which I have just shown. So now the only difference is that you get here a gap. So the 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 Diakonovsky states they connect the heavy hole to the light hole. So that's why I call I call them topological because if I if I make here a cut in energy, I have only uh, an odd number of states that, that goes through and they connect to them. Now, if I if I do somewhere here, I, had, I would have just the Rajda state. There, so, so this, this the fact that these lines go down uh, makes them not too much. Now, the difference if you do the Lattinger model, which is basically um, uh, zooming onto onto the gamma point, uh, but you can keep the mass, so it's easier. Uh, it, it is it is possible to keep the mass finite, and um, you, you see how, how this state, uh, which in the K model for the infinite mass was uh, going away from here, uh, now it's going from here. Then we made also a K model with, with mass, because this is flat band, and, and we introduced the mass, and we found actually that 
that that that the situation uh, uh, well they correspond to one another so 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 the 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 fact that we have here uh, um, matching of, of the two points it, it is due to the infinite mass so so the Latinger model really explains except that we notice also that there are additional um, states uh, that that are like weak states that are very close to the bulk and most people probably would have missed them if doing numerics. So th this is a uh, new result uh, on the archive. Now, uh, the case of of the, um, the of the opposite strain, when you do not have a topological insulator, but you, you transform the semi-metal into, into a Dirac semi-metal, so it has a, a cone in the projected density space, uh, so for this, you need to reverse the sign of the strain. Instead of cadmium to the right, you use zinc to the right, or some alloy with zinc to the right. And then, actually, what you obtain are both branches of the uh, diagonal KSP state, which were non-physical uh, before, so the, these states that occur in, in a situation where the mass is, is not, doesn't occur in nature to have such a, a ratio of the heavy hole and light hole mass, now they both show up. So you have both both branches of states at the same time. So, uh, but this is not a topological insulator, so uh, I don't need to call them uh, topological. Now, what is interesting further, well, is first to look at the bigger picture and uh, and also to like uh, add additional terms to the Hamiltonian. So what we have considered is basically some barrier and some topological states, uh, in the case of compressors, they actually are oscillating. So, uh, and we have the bulk of Pankratov states that, that are hybridizing with the heavy holes. They're hybridizing everywhere except for the point uh, k equals zero. So at, at this point, actually, they decouple. So one, if in the experiment one looms uh, at, the, at the zero momentum uh, case, at, at the uh, at the gamma, you you could you could see surface resonances, so they are really a localized states superimposed on the continuum of, of heavy holes, but they decouple, so they are really they are not broadening, so they must be really sharp. As you go away, I could not draw it, you know, but what I want to show that they they fade, so basically they 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 get as you go away, they get broader and broader. So, and the diagonal KSK state, they, they are just there. Now, one can consider, okay, uh, tensile strain, get a topological insulator, uh, compressive strain, get a, a, a semi-metal, a direct semi-metal. And what is interesting further, if you add additional terms to, to the Hamiltonian, like bulk inversion asymmetry terms, and this has been proposed in the, in the literature, has been studied to, to some to some extent, um, and one can continue even further, I think additional terms, and we go, go to the case of a bio uh, semi-metal, but I will not go to it to today, we consider that as well. But uh, uh, what, what I want to, to show is just some results, how things change in the case of another line uh, semi-metal. So the, the not line, so we start again with the two diagonal case with several states, and this is the, the projected density of states that has uh, two, two branches of one of singularities. Now they are more detailed here. And if you apply a spin orbital uh, splitting, bulk inversion asymmetry spin orbital splitting, you, you kind of induce a, a offset to the momentum where this Dirac cone appears. But this momentum is a two dimensional momentum. So I should talk, sorry. Uh, and this this creates another line in the in the momentum space. Uh, what, what we found actually we, we thought we will find very interesting features of, uh, for, for, for this substrate. But what we found actually that, that this is a non-analytic point. So this is the termination point. So there are patches of surface states that terminate at the nodal line. So they behave non-analytically even in physical quantities, like the spin, if, if you 
help with the skin, it will jump at the normal line. But other than that, they behave uh, like some Rajba states, you know, as they if you want uh, to, to view this with some strange skin splitting. So, but even Rajba states, they can be useful and, and, and interesting. So, so for, for, for now, I, I think I will stop because I can really run over over time. And, uh, to, to summarize, okay, so it's still work in, in progress, but 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 uh, um, we 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 are advanced to, I guess, to the point where uh, something useful for for experimentalists can be. To be Questions. <clears throat> I uh, back to the first part. Uh, so the without screen that was originally performed for the quantum um, dot cubic, I think it was uh, the uh, let's say charge. Some that was not uh, dispersed it out, that was supposed yeah. to be. And I think this part of ferromagnet that we showed, it was a part of the signals. How people are using uh, uh, dispersing it out? So, uh, tell us something how you uh, propose using all this in this introduction to this So, yeah, thank you. And uh, actually, uh, so the, the readout actually was the biggest uh, issue when, when I thought about these things. Uh, I, uh, everything uh, looks clear how to, to, do, to proceed, but the readout is not so clear because you don't have a splitting in energy. So, so you, you, you can rely on, on a dispersive readout only if you have some, some, uh, thing, some, some difference between up and down states in, in your response, whatever, the, the electric response or the inductive response. So in this case here, uh, in this setup where you have a gate, so it's, it's an electric response, right? So the electric response will be different for up and down uh, states. So you have a capacitance that depends on spin, but in general, it would also have an inductance if, if, if you pass current like in, in other cases. Uh, so, so the reason why you have a difference is because when you have a quantum dot coupled to to units uh, and they are they are proximitized, so it's a superconducting unit. So there are tails of, of the wave function. So I'm trying to depict it here. So there are some tails of the wave function that go into the superconductor. The superconductor is an insulator. And uh, under the bandage, so the distance, the up and down state, they are almost at the same energy because this exchange field is weak there because of the bandwidth. And uh, up, the, the distance to the bandage from up and down spins is different. So the, these tails are, are different. So now if you push a bielectric field an electron against the barrier and its tail, its tail can go into the barrier, you will have one, one uh, susceptibility to to push it. And if it tail cannot go into the barrier, it will it will react back more. So you will have a different susceptibility. So so, so the, the 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 you you can use this uh to to do dispersive readout. So if you can measure um the the susceptibility to to the uh, electric field you you, you can tell the difference between up and, and down. So the skin here, so this is a skin cubic, it could be either a capacitance that, that is skin dependent or an inductance. So if you have a setup where you can pass carbon. So basically, uh, this is the mechanism. And this is also possible by spin orbital alone. You know? so, because there is always a one to one correspondence. No, spin orbit plus time reversal. Uh, you need to break time when I'm saying that. Just keep on because nothing. No questions. Uh, you talked about comp uh, compression. 
or something like this. Yeah. It was uh, uniaxial or one dimensional or three dimensional compression. No, it was you, you, it was you, well, what they call you, you, injection depends on which axis you, you want. It doesn't matter which. Yeah, so it means uh, basically, I, uh, the people people use different terminology and, and it's very dangerous to, to speak. Uh, what it means, in, imagine like a case of compressor, imagine like a zinc telluride, and then on this substrate, you grow mercury telluride, some, some thick enough, some slab of mercury telluride. So it, it compresses in plane. So it's uniaxial for me that it has, a, by symmetry, it has a, an axis out of plane. Okay, but, it means in plane compression. In plane compression. So Maybe what, because there are, okay. What, uh, what they are talking about is natural effect. Natural, natural. But compression is also can be artificial. Yes. I would say physically um, yes. applied by some, people. Some people consider very strange, uh, strange situations, which maybe are possible to implement, but not easy. And th there are, okay, tell me Alex and, and more, more interesting things there. Uh, whereas I, I like to be only down to earth if possible, so that it's related to the experiment somehow. And in this case, actually, the big problem that we had was the position of the Dirac foam, because many artist experiments show that it floats up. And, and actually, we, we could not uh, agree with it. So it, it I, I think a lot of people- You, do, you disagree. No, I disagree, but I think, I think okay. that this is also psychological because you see, uh, people want to have this here. And, uh, and this is what, what is needed and they push and, and they interpret their data by filtering in such a way that artists is dangerous, you know. You, you know better than me. Materials in general are dangerous. <laughs> Okay, there's no more questions. Let's thank the okay, speaker. Four five six. Four 